I've seen a lot of talk in social media about how to expose Winamanic Mini. And rightly so, as it is quite awkward. At first sight, this drone in video mode has only automatic exposure and even worse, automatic white balance. This is something that puts off a lot of users, especially advanced ones. In this video, after quickly analyzing the new interface of the Mini DJI Fly, I will show you how to op optimize exposure on the Mini. With a couple of tricks, it is possible to expose almost like in manual mode. At the end, I will also show another trick. How to visualize the values for shutter speed and ISO in Mavic Mini videos. I already published two videos about the Mini. I will put a link at the end of this one and the link in the playlist in the description below. There will be several other coming covering uh, in depth all the different aspects of this drone. So, if you're interested in drone, subscribe to my channel, the home of fearless drone heroes. The Mavic Mini has a brand new app called DJI Fly, instead of the usual DJI Go 4. It is really simple and I actually quite like it. To the left we have the takeoff button. On the top left we can tap to toggle between the three modes, position, sport and cinematic. I find it a much better solution than the switch on the remote controller in other DJI model, as the switch from time to time would slip out of place. Next to the right we have the status indicator. On the top right side the number of satellites, the indicator of the strength of the signal, battery levels and remaining flight time. By clicking on the three dots to the right we can access all the different settings and preferences. There are two main tools to help with exposure, the histogram and the zebra highlights. To access them we choose camera in the top menu and then advanced shooting settings. So I like to have the histogram always on. The icon can be dragged around the screen. At the bottom left we can access the map view and indicators from the height and the vertical speed as well as the distance from the home point and the horizontal speed. The icon at the bottom in the middle locates the drone in relation to the home point in order to estimate its position. Very useful. In the right part of the screen we have the main tools we need for exposing. Above the huge shutter icon there is an icon to toggle between photo and video. In photo mode we can click in the auto button at the bottom right to gain control of ISO and shutter speed settings. We can choose a ISO value from 100 to 3200 and a shutter speed from uh, 4 seconds to 1 8000th of a second. If we go back to auto mode, we can click anywhere on the image to set the exposure according to the luminosity of that point. This is not available in video. If we choose video, we notice two of the biggest shortcomings of the Mini, at least for semi-professional use. 4K is not available and there is no option for 24 frames per second. I really like the video quality and the portability of this puppy. And in certain situations I would like to occasionally use footage shot with the Mini in some projects. But the lack of 4K video really limits what can be done professionally. The absence of 24 frames per second is really annoying. A lot of people shoot in 24 and it is very hard to integrate footage shot with the Mini with other clips in this frame rate. I hope 24 frames per second will be added in the future. The Mavic Mini doesn't have adjustable aperture, so the only two parameters available to control exposure are ISO and shutter speed. But in video we have no control at all. What? 
automatic exposure? Come on, DJI, you cannot be serious. And even worse, no control on white balance? Let's see what happens when shooting footage using auto exposure. The sensor will adjust to change in luminosity to maintain a constant exposure, but there is a very noticeable delay. Since by definition with drone video the point of view tends to move a lot, the brightness of the video will be all over the place. The same goes for automatic white balance. As the luminosity of the scene changes, there is generally a strong shift in color. After testing for a good while, I must admit that the auto white balance in the Mini is very well implemented and I have hardly noticed any of those shifts. So, what can we do about the horrible results of auto exposure? Luckily, there are two icons at the bottom right of the screen that come to our rescue. To the left we have the AE button. Here we can modify the proposed exposure by thirds of a stop. The exposure proposed is generally too bright. I like to avoid overexposing the highlights and if needed I try to adjust the shadows in post-processing as there is no chance to recover burnt highlights. I use the histogram and the lower exposure until the right side is not touching the right edge. I actually prefer to leave some empty space to the right. Once I get the desired exposure, I can use the icon to the right, AE lock, to keep the same exposure throughout the whole clip. Using this method we regain control of exposure, almost like using manual. The exposure will remain locked until we tap on the lock exposure button. And also, if we change the EV value, the exposure will go back to auto again. So, if you want to keep shooting in this sort of manual mode and need to modify the EV value, don't forget to hit the EV lock button again. If we don't know the value of ISO and shutter speed in video mode, it will be hard to use ND filters if we want to apply the 180 degree rule. But I will make a specific video on how to use filters on the Mini. There is something about exposure in the Mini that left me a bit puzzled. When shooting footage in very dark conditions, the Mini somehow managed to gather an incredible amount of light. In this case I'm shooting well after sunset, it is really dark, and even more I'm pointing the camera down for a top-down clip. Normally the footage should be totally dark, but look at the amount of light we get. Astonishing. Since the Mini has a fixed aperture and in video shutter speed cannot be slower than the frame rate, in this case 1 30th of a second, I must assume that the ISO value is extremely high, but the funny thing is that we hardly get any noise at all. Mystery. Could not sleep for a few nights with this dubbed in mind, so I searched around until I found a solution. A software called VLC Media Player can be downloaded for free. When watching footage using VLC, if we activate the subtitles, we can see the values for ISO and shutter speed in real time. Very useful. In auto exposure, the camera tends to keep ISO at 100, while the shutter speed goes up and down a lot, according to luminosity. But let's see what happens in very low light. As the light goes down, shutter speed gets slower until just above 1 30th of a second, and only then it starts to increase ISO up to a maximum of around ISO 500 in this situation. In drone footage I generally hardly touch ISO at all, as I tend to become a sort of noise machine, apart from the Mavic 2 Pro where I go occasionally up to 400. But the quality of this footage with the Mini at around ISO 400 is incredibly good. Hardly any noise at all. Way better ISO performance than the Mavic 2 Pro. 
Also, the amount of luminosity extracted by the Mini in such a dark scene is incredible. Maybe the Albarella H22 video processor has something to do with it. But it must be said that the Mavic Mini is a real low light beast. Thank you for watching this far. For a few more videos, I will keep analyzing in depth all the different aspects of this tiny beast. So, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye for now.